Hi there. My name is Carter Lefkoff, and in this part of the podcast, I'll be talking to you about the advancements in new industries that led to the new possibilities in production, the steps that the newly created state of Germany used to become the industrial rival of Great Britain, and how they helped to remote industry within its borders, how advancements in transportation and communication affected trade, migrations, and global interactions, and the hazards of industrial life and how they impacted life during this time. A lot of stuff, right? So, when talking about the new possibilities in production, steel was one of the most important things during the Industrial Revolution. It's much stronger and more durable than iron. This was very necessary for the creation of new tools and machinery, such as springs, pistons, levers, etc. These machines were better, faster, and stronger than their iron counterparts. They also had led to even better inventions. The large-scale production of chemicals was an important part of the Industrial Revolution. Chemicals were started by new scientific knowledge that was applied to industries as scientists and engineers unlocked the secrets of physics and chemistry. Some examples of these chemicals are sulfuric acid, sodium carbonate, and hydrochloric acid. Sulfuric acid and sodium chloride were the two most important chemicals during this time, since they led to many new advancements and inventions in other industries. Sodium carbonate helped the glass, textile, soap, and paper industries, and sulfuric acid was used to remove dust from iron, steel, and bleaching cloth. Electricity also played a big role in the Industrial Revolution. Prior to the proven discovery of electricity, people used water and steam power to make machines work. A British scientist named Michael Faraday was able to conjure electricity by moving a magnet through coil wires. Many inventions were created, such as the electric motor, the telephone, the power plant, the wireless telegraph, and the incandescent light bulb. So, when talking about Germany, the Industrial Revolution began about a century later there than it did in England. First came the Zollverein in 1833 that, by abolishing tolls between the various German principalities, made Germany into a common market. In 1870, the modern German nation was created, and thereafter, major industries were founded that led to the full-fledged industrialization of Germany. Germany started to interact with other countries during this time. The southern side of the Rhine Valley of Germany was incorporated into France by Napoleon. This period of forced integration with France stimulated economic change in the Rhine Valley. Eventually, this part of the Rhine Valley became independent from France, but it retained some of the economic and institutional reforms of the Napoleonic period. Germany also involved themselves with Prussia. Prussia initiated a concept of a common market in 1818 and, 18, and, in, and in 1833, a treaty extended the Zollverein to the larger states of Germany. A rail system for Germany developed rapidly under the promotion of the German state governments. The rail system increased the demand for steel and coal. The coal fields in the Ruhr Valley were fully developed, and the stimulus of the coal and steel development expanded banking and capital markets available to Germany. This led to Germany becoming the most advanced chemical industry in the world. <clears throat> One of the biggest advances in communication was the telegraph. With the use of the telegraph, messages could travel from point to point extremely quickly. Initially, telegrams were unpractical and were expensive enough to the point that their use was limited to government agencies, large business firms, and relatively wealthy individuals. But in the 1860s and 1870s, the mass public started to benefit from telegraphs due to newspapers expanding their use of telegraphic news services from distant locales. Telephone services also emerged after World War I, but they were highly expensive compared to the telegraph. For transportation, the three major advances were railroads, canals, and roads. Railroads were the first technology that closed the gap in speed between sea and land travel. Canals were able to reduce the travel time by sea. Once built, canals were very cheap to use. Trains and steamboats were able to carry more passengers due to their increase in size, and thus reducing the cost of travel. <coughs> there was also an increase in the capacity of freight cars and freight carrying ships that reduced the cost of transporting goods over long distances. 
This allowed people to travel to different places easier and allow for easier trade. After people revol revolted against the tolls that turnpike roads were forcing on people, many acts were put into place, so roads would be easier to use. As roads kept improving, albeit slowly and inconsistently, a greater number of items could be transported across them, especially expensive items. Roads were really more so relied on during the beginning of the revolution and played a far smaller role in moving freight than canals and railroads. Population was a major hazard during the Industrial Revolution. Sorry, pollution was, not population. Although overpopulation also was a huge problem, but we'll get into that in a sec. Pollution was mainly caused by factories, overpopulation, and lack of sanitation. Rivers were heavily affected by pollution, and as a result ended up negatively affecting urban communities. The massive influx of people in urban communities led to some drainage systems collapsing and flooding the streets with waste. In some British industrial cities, only one-third of the houses had toilets. Excrement was put into cesspits under buildings and drained into rivers. This led to people unknowingly drinking contaminated water and becoming ill. Pollution also affected factory workers and led to an illness known as mill fever, which had taken many lives. As the new towns and cities rapidly developed during the Industrial Revolution, the need for cheap housing near factories increased. Many were constructed too quickly, however. This led to many people living in overcrowded and inadequate homes. Many factory workers faced several safety hazards, health hazards, and cruel treatment. Machines used in factories were the latest in technology, and factory owners were extremely anxious to get their machines up and running. Safety was not a major concern to them, and the dangerous parts of machines weren't screened off. Machines also weren't equipped with a way to turn them off in case of an emergency. Children were hired as scavengers and had to crawl under the machines to retrieve loose bits of cotton. Slightly older children were hired as piercers and had to step up onto the machines to tie loose threads back together. In, min in mill towns, many workers were seen without an arm or a leg. Hi there, my name is Jack Bolas, and in this part of the podcast, I will be discussing reactions to industrialization, which includes women's suffrage, public education, and labor movements, the comparison of capitalism and socialism, and ways that industrialization impacted imperialism in the 19th century. As the Industrial Revolution came around, it was apparent that industrialization was, in part, fueled by the economic necessity of many women. Though it brought a lot of work to women, most jobs were extremely labor-intensive. As more and more women started getting into more labor-intensive jobs, the lifespan in women showed a dramatic decrease. Whether it was due to work-related accidents or chemicals accidentally consumed at work in factories, the lifespan in women fell. Women's suffrage wasn't the only thing changed by industrial industrialization. Public education was also changed. As the revolution initiated the rise of capitalism in Europe and North America, this motivated the common individual to take advantage of many economic opportunities, but they would have to be educated to do so. So, in the mid to late 1800s, education became the prime mechanism for survival in the world. It also became the main way to have a means of upward mobility in society. Another reaction to the Industrial Revolution was labor movements. Many working class people faced horrible working conditions, like cramped workspaces and dangerous factory operations. Due to this, many socialist movements emerged looking to improve the conditions and lives of the workers. Some of these movements were Marxism and Utopian Socialism. These two movements both wanted to stop the exploitation of the workers from the owners and created a more balanced society. Many people, upon hearing capitalism and socialism, may not know the key similarities and differences, but of course we're here to show you just that. Some differences are that capitalism is unconcerned about equity. It argues that inequality is essential to encourage innovation and economic development, while socialism is concerned with redistributing resources from the rich to the poor. Some say socialism is a lighter form of communism. In capitalism, Private businesses are owned by private individuals, while 
In socialism, the state-managed economy prices are usually set by the government's official standards. Some comparisons are that both economic and political powers are distributed to all equal. Another similarity between these two government types is that both governments deal with society and economy. Finally, another similarity is that everyone is motivated to do work. Imperialism started long before the Industrial Revolution began, but it really started kicking off the 19th century. Imperialism originally derived from a desire to spread Christianity to other countries who had not heard of this religion before. But in the 19th century during the Industrial Revolution, it derived from a desire to acquire greater resources and raw materials for the various European economies who colonized many countries with valuable resources. With new machinery being made, that made processing materials much easier and more accessible to the people. With this, it had more of a drive for people to try and gain these resources. Imperialism also spread due to many European people's desires to spread Christianity. With industrialization, this made transport to outside countries much, much easier. Steam-powered boats were used a lot to get, more, get to more countries and access more and more resources. Sir Frederick Lugard, who was the governor of Hong Kong and Nigeria for the British Empire, made many references to um, how industrialization impacted imperialism during the 19th century, and that source will be linked in the description. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the National Nene Society podcast. Um, all of the citations will be linked in the description as well as the primary sources. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope to catch you next time.